day two of uh, Precision Rifle. Uh, this morning, we're taking everybody out and we're going to shoot a cold barrel shot. And the cold barrel shot is one of the most important shots that you'll ever take because everything you shoot, at, whether it be an elk or a deer, at 200, 500, 1,000 yards, the first shot out of that barrel is a cold barrel shot. So what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of explain it to you. With me, there's my target. With me on the cold barrel shot, uh, I always shoot low and to the left. I'm usually about a minute low and a minute to the half minute to the left. So I know that the first round out of my rifle is going to be low and left. So I have to compensate for that by putting that minute and a minute up and a quarter minute to the right on my target. But you, you think about the cold, the cold barrel, the cold shot, it's always different than after your barrel heats up. After your barrel heats up, that's when you'll start shooting great groups. But if you notice when you shoot and you got your target after you're shooting a five shot group and your first thing in the morning, it's eight o'clock in the morning, first shot out, it's one low and then you'll have a group right there at 100 yards. Hopefully you'll have a group. If you don't jerk the trigger, screw the pivot, do something like that, okay? And uh, so that's your cold barrel shot. But let's talk a little bit about what went on, what we talked about in the last session, yesterday's session. A couple of guys in the class are a little bit confused about how to figure the windage. So we're going to go over that again, and we're going to talk. The range equals the distance you're shooting. And if it's 500 yards, put a 5 there. Do what, take those two zeros and just get rid of them. Okay? The velocity. One guy in the class thought the velocity was the speed of his bullet we shoot. No, that's how fast the wind is blowing. And if it's 10 miles an hour, so what that comes down to, we're shooting 500 yards times 10 mile an hour wind equals 50. Divide that by 10, and that equals 5 minutes of angle. 10 is the common denominator for uh, 308, 30 out 6, and 300 mag. And we divide by 15 for 223 type rifles, the smaller rifles. So if we look at we look at range as being the, the distance you're shooting, not not the range you're on or whatever you're doing, the distance you're shooting. The velocity is how fast the wind's blowing, and then we divide it by 10 for 308 and 30 out of 6. We divide, divide it by 15 for uh, 223. And remember, if it's odd, always round up. Bear with me here. I'm not much of a friggin' artist, okay? So, this session here is going to be data books. There's several hundred out there. Uh, you can get them off the internet. Uh, Creedmoor Sports has them. Uh, Brownells has them. I always like the, the Creedmoor and the Brownells because the pages are waterproof. And you write on them and then it doesn't go away and they're a little bit smaller. But whichever way you want to start out, they're quite expensive. They're like 18 or $20 a book. But that's what I always use because I wanted everything to be just so-so when I, when I got my books together. And what you're going to find is you can pick the target that you want on, on your, uh, on your book. You can have a circular target, or you.
or you can have a man target. You can have one for shooting moving targets, which is a guy turned sideways. So you just pick the target that you want, uh, or the, uh, the target that you want for what you're going to be shooting on. Now, if you're law enforcement, you'll be shooting uh, a man, man type target, B27 type target. If you're shooting uh, a hunter, usually uses a round target. I like the round ones the best because when I shot high power, that's what we always shot at was a circular target. So I could put my marks on there wherever I wanted to. I'm going to grab my cheat sheet because on this you're going to have a line up here and it's going to say meters or, or yards. If it says meters, write yards in there because I don't do anything unless it's off, the, off yards. That's uh, the way I do it. It's going to ask you for your ammo. Gonna be a little squares for all this stuff, but you'll have your ammo. You'll have two circles, like this: one for one for sunlight, one for wind. And remember, you're always at the six o'clock position when you do this in your book. That makes it consistent for you. If you start putting X's over here and all over the place, and what I always did is on my cold barrel shot. I would always use one page, and that would be the cold barrel shot for the day. And I would write, cold shot on it. And that way I knew exactly where that shot had went at 100 yards or 200 yards. That was, that was my 200 yard shot. Then my zeros came after that. I have another page following that on my the zeros. So when you're shooting in a match, my first round down range had a different zero than my second round, third and fourth and fifth round. It's going to have the light, the temp, barometric pressure, the hour of the day will be on there someplace. And that's very important also because if it's the 10th of June at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, that's totally different than November 15th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when, where the sun's going to be. So you have to, you have, you have to have go, if you're looking for a zero on a, on your, in your book, you need to go to the day, closest you can get to the day of the year and the time of the year that you're shooting. We're going to have elevation in there. We're going to have the we're going to have a spot in there that says uh, zero used and correct zero. That zero use, that's what you started with. The correct zero is what you ended up with at the end of the day when you ended up shooting. And it's going to ask you for your ammo. I've already got that. I've already covered that. If you're shooting reloads, mark that you have ensure reloads. And I would put, I put a lot number on my reloads or use a lot number off the box. But if, if you're using... Uh, 4830 or powder on 165 grain bullet or 168 grain bullet. I would mark down how many grains and everything I had in that book so that I knew exactly what my uh, uh, ammo is. Ammo changes just like uh, the wind or the sun or whatever. Okay. Let's talk about why they ask for elevation. The rule of thumb is. For every thousand feet of elevation, it changes the strike of your bullet by one inch, by one MOA. Okay, so if you're shooting at at uh, sea level, which is heavy, really heavy air, and you go to ten thousand feet of elevation, then you have uh, you have quite a discrepancy there. You could have a, a ten inch difference. So. And the reason 
I bring that up. It's just a rule of thumb. With me, it was, I could shoot at sea level and come up to where I'm at now, 5,000 feet, and it was about three minutes of angle. So, but all your writers and all the people that put this together say roughly uh, one MOA would shoot to make sure it changes. So if you're hunting an elk, if you sight in your gun at, at uh, 5,000 feet of elevation or 4,500 and or even, even if you're coming to a guided hunt in Idaho from California and you're shooting at zero sea level and you come up to 5,800, you know, there's going to be a discrepancy in the, in your bullet strike because the light air up here compared to the heavy air in California. Temperature. We're going to go with the temperature now and the temperature is rather iffy. I shouldn't say iffy. There's a rule of thumb for it. It's for every 10 degrees of temperature, you have a 1 MOA of change in your strike of your bullet. So if you shoot, if you sight your gun in at 50 degrees and you're shooting at 90, 90 degrees, you should have a four minute of angle difference in that. It's pretty, it's pretty close for me. But then you get the guy that he he leaves his rifle in the sun, he leaves his ammo in the sun, and what happens? That ammo and that rifle conduct more heat. And I've seen ammo get factory ammo get so hot laying in the sun at uh, some different ranges that when you put it in your rifle and fired it, you'd blow the primer out. It felt that much chamber pressure on you. So if you're shooting, keep your bullets out of the sun, keep your rifle out of the sun, and just when you're going to use it, just when you're going to use that rifle, because you feel more heat, it's going to change your zero. Everything we do is going to change our zero. Barometric pressure. The, the more pressure you get, the different it's going to affect the bullet, and with that, you just have to shoot it. I can't. It, uh, there's so many different explanations and guys trying to figure it out. It's just you have to shoot if you're going to watch your barometric pressure. And that was <laughs> pretty much the least of my worries when I was uh, when I was shooting. Okay. <clears throat> let's let's cover range card. Shooting people put out this fancy little thing. Uh, it's got a bunch of circles on it. That's supposed to be yardages, and this is you down here in your shooting position. Okay. A range card is nothing more than me saying I'm here at 130 yards. There's an old truck. Or there's a farmhouse at 650 yards. <clears throat> Let's just throw this all away. And for the elk hunter or the deer hunter, when I move into a spot, I know what my distance I can shoot. I feel comfortable with 750 yards. So I will take out my little notebook that I carry with me all the time. On that page, I will put me right there, and I will mark this lone pine tree out here at 650 yards. This big old rock pile over here is 750. And this little this little pond we have down here at 130 yards. Knowing that my couple shot 750 yards, I know that anything that comes within this area here, it's time for me to start really thinking about shooting. That's when I'll range it, I'll shoot it, and uh, that's... Uh, that's the range card I use in the field. 
a notebook, a piece of notebook paper and a pen and write it all down and I lay it right there where I'm set where I'm set up at for the hour or two hours that I'm gonna sit there and watch the, the hillside. And when I move on, I'll tear that paper up and I'll start a new one. Now would be a good time to subscribe to our channel. We're uh, moving uh, to we're hoping to get a thousand subscribers, so subscribe, like, and we'll see you on session three.